Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I was cleaning the garage and just trying to tidy up the rock area. And I came across this Buchanan Thunder Egg that Kyle from World of Rock Hounds gifted me a while back. We cut it open in a video and I forgot how beautiful this specimen is. And it was just lying to the side on the bench there and I came across it while I was cleaning and I thought, man, you know what, I gotta polish this thing. It looks gorgeous. I'll just show it to you wet. I thought I would polish this on the uh, high tech diamond eight inch flat lap, the smaller thunder egg. So I thought maybe, you know, I just go through my process and how I polish rocks on the high tech diamond flat lap. Maybe give a bit of tutorial as I'm going. Uh, just give you my thought process of tips and tricks that I do to try to get the best polish. Without further ado, let's just get on into this video and uh, polish up this beautiful Buchanan Thunder Egg. Come along. So before I actually do anything with the flat lap, I like to take the surface and I like to put a little bit of marking on it just because I want to know how far I'm actually grinding down and after the first like five minutes on the grinding stage I can tell where the high spots are and where I need to focus so I usually just put like a, a little spider web pattern in here I just use a brown marker now there's lots of ways you could do this uh, there's other types of markers you could use there's also scratch pens I think you could use Marlena put me on to something before um, that welders use that you could that you could use as well that might do a better job but I, I like to use this method here I found it's worked for me pretty good in the past and yeah I just draw that little little spiderweb pattern on there and then I'll start my grinding process and this kind of helps guide me along to let me know just where the high spots are on the rock there's a really bad high spot right here on the on on this side of the thunder egg so I'm going to have to grind this down quite a bit right here. I'm going to be starting off with a pretty non-aggressive disc. I'm, do, I'm starting off with a 260 grinding disc. The reason why I'm starting off with a 260 grinding disc is because this is a smaller piece. And this, even though there is a high spot here, the cut is relatively flat. It's not, it's not going to take a lot to grind this down. So I don't want to really put any aggressive scratches in it with a more coarse disc. So I'm starting off with a very, uh, one of the finer grain discs, which is the 260 electroplated diamond disc. I really like this disc. I find it does a really good job on the smaller pieces. You know, if I have a bigger piece, I'll probably use something that's a little more coarse. But uh, like I said, like where this is so small, uh, I think this will do the job quite nicely. So, yeah. Now with regards to water delivery, this is a wet grinding flat lap so you need to have water coming onto the disc so that you don't create a huge amount of dust in your in your space so right right now I just use the the water delivery system that comes with the unit you can get a a pump system that high tech will sell basically it's a pump that pumps water directly onto the flat lap and then it has another discharge that goes into a, a so basically a five gallon bucket with a pump in it pumps to the flat lap and then you have another discharge that comes out and goes into another bucket it's it's just a longer lasting setup this this here on a grinding disc a full cup you know you just turn this valve and it starts delivering water you know that'll last 15 20 minutes on a grinding stage so you might lose patience. <laughs> I don't really lose patience with that. I, I'm okay with having, I usually have a, some water and I just top it up, you know, as I'm going. So it's not a big deal for me, but some people, you know, I do know people that have bought that pump system and uh, are really happy with it. So, you know, teach their own. It depends on, you know, how often you're, you're polishing rocks and, uh, you know, the setup of your shop. I'm, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just based on your personal preference, but I like to use this. Um, I also use this for other things too. I use it on my vibrating lap. Um, it's a really good, uh, really good water delivery system for a vibrating lap as well because you can control the speed very well here. Um, but yeah, the water delivery system, 
I'm okay with the one I have right now. As mentioned, I'm going to be starting off with a 260 electroplated diamond disc. The electroplated diamond discs, you don't, you don't want to run them full blast. You don't want to run them up to a 6. It's recommended you don't go any higher than a 4. I like to run mine around 3, you know, uh, maybe a little between 3 and 4. Don't go higher than 3 or 4 because I find that I really get good results at 3 or 4. With the smoothing disc, you can ramp it up, and we'll get into that more later. Really, it's more of a feel thing um, I find with this machine. I find something that works for me, and I tend to just stick with that. You know, you can really drive yourself crazy with trying to get the perfect grind and the perfect polish using flat laps, this machine in particular. But I found something that works for me, and I stick with it. And I'm just sharing that with you guys in case you want to just, you know, give it a go, trying to duplicate what I've been doing. Um, because I've been having pretty good success with this, with you know how I've been using this machine lately. Um, so yeah, I run I run my electroplated diamond discs, all my grinding discs, on a speed three or four. As far as how much water to deliver to the the disc, this is this really depends on the piece you're polishing and the size of it of the surface area. So I start off relatively slow, and how I kind of determine if that's enough water or not, I'll start the machine up. And then I'll put the piece on the machine. I'll run it around for a little bit. And then when I pick it up and look at it, the entire surface should be wet. And in this case, it's not. There's a little bit up here that's that that the water is not getting to so I know that right now the current drip that I have is not enough so I'm gonna increase it so I've got a pretty good steady drip there now I'm gonna try this again and now when I lift that up quite a lot of water all over there possibly not getting up here just a little bit but the rest of that has got you know water all over it so I'm gonna go ahead and start polishing this rock now I'm gonna go ahead and, and do both sides of the Thunder Egg on the 260 and if I have any tips as I'm going I'll stop and uh, explain those but I'm gonna go ahead and polish this right now So if you notice I'm using a figure eight slash S pattern here with my hands on the surface of the flat lap. This is because I'm trying to make sure that the same diamonds on the wheel are not contacting the same spots on the surface of the rock all the time. So I'm moving the piece around and I'm making sure that you know the diamonds are not you know contacting the same spot because when that happens then you see you get you'll get deeper scratches so if one diamond is hitting the same spot every time if you're just keeping the piece stationary hey, you're going to notice that uh, you're going to notice scratches so i'd like to keep the thing moving um like this and i just find that this provides such a nice uh such a nice result i, I don't really get any scratches uh at the end of, of doing this uh, once i get everything flat down i don't see any scratches so that's why i use this method so I've been grinding this side for about two, three minutes, and I can tell where the high spot, I can tell where the high spots are right now. Um, you can see the markers gone right, here, right along this line right here, and then you can see the marker along there, and then there's a marker gone here. So it's kind of like a, a wavy. The saw kind of was was wavy on this piece, um, which is okay. This is grinding down pretty fast, so we should have everything down to a even surface on this side probably another few minutes so I'm gonna keep going okay so we finished grinding that first half of the Thunder Egg and got rid of all my marker and everything's down to the same level and I'm pretty happy with this not really any scratches on it
my method, my figure eight method there, did a really good job of minimizing any consistent scratches. But uh, pretty happy with this. Any remaining scratches will probably get taken out with the higher up grit discs. Just one thing to mention maybe is that uh, you could polish two types of rocks on this. You could polish a flat surface rock, which is what I'm doing here. Or you can make a cab, which is like contour polishing. I find this machine um, very difficult to contour polish on. I'm not saying it can't be done, but something like a cab king uh, where you have uh, the vertical discs, the vertical discs rotating, that's you know a proper cabbing machine. That would do much better than this. However, I have seen people make cabs with this and make really nice cabs with this machine. Um, I think it takes quite a bit of skill, more skill than polishing a flat stone. But I will say I've tried both. And while it's easier to get a good contoured polish, like contouring a stone, moving it around on a dopping stick, it's easier to grind, it's easier to polish. But getting it to the shape you want, I find is extremely difficult. That's That's the challenging part for me. Um, a flat surface on this flat lap, I find, is much more challenging to actually polish. Not worrying about size of the cab or anything like that when you're comparing a cab versus this stone. Um, I just find flat surfaces much more difficult to polish because of the scratching and, um, you know, for some reason, you know, it's just harder to get, you know, scratches out. But, you know, I've got a pretty good method right now, that figure eight method, I was, as I mentioned before, um, does a really good job of keeping the scratches away and using this 260 grit disc as your starting disc on smaller pieces really helps again I just polished this side in about 15 to 20 minutes and you know this is silica so I mean this whole center is silica this is rhyolite on the outside but uh, yeah that's that's pretty hard material there but it uh Got everything down to the same surface in about 15, 20 minutes. So pretty happy with how this is turning out. Even got a little bit of a shine on the on this part of the the silica there. You see some water line in that. But now we're going to move on to the other side, which is the one that has the raised little notch down here. So this one will t probably take a little bit longer. But yeah, we'll compare both sides when I'm done. Okay, so I got both sides grind it down even and got all the marker gone from both sides and I think this is ready to move on to the 220 polishing disc stage one thing I would recommend is that in between stages and even maybe during the stage periodically that you're on that you allow the piece to dry and take a look at it and look at where the scratches are That'll help you because it may, you might be pressing too hard on one side or you might be positioning the piece just kind of in an awkward position on the on the flat lap. And you might be able to, like, for example, when I first started polishing on this, I would look at my pieces while I'm on this stage and I would see scratches in the same spot. So that's when I was keeping the piece still. So I knew there was probably a high diamond on one of the on this area that was catching the same spot every time it was just kept on just grinding it down that's why it's important to keep the piece moving on the uh, flat lap uh, so you don't get those scratches um, so yeah check let them dry check them periodically especially at the end of every stage before you move it on you want to make sure all the scratches are gone and I'm very happy with this uh, result right here at the end of the 260 grinding stage no scratches and I can tell this is gonna polish up really nice and uh, let's move on to the 220 polishing disc. Okay, so I have the 220 polishing disc on there now. And this disc and the subsequent higher grit discs. So we'll be going through 220. Then the next one's a 325. Then it goes 600, 1200, 3000. And I'm going to be stopping at 3000. I, I don't use the polishing wheel. And I'll explain why later. But I don't use a lot of water on this disc. It'll be a much slower drip than what I had going on the grinding disc. And this stage will take considerably less time than the grinding stage. So these next four or five wheels should go by pretty quickly. I'll show you at the end what the rock looks like at the end of each, each disc. 
But yeah, this this should only take maybe f less than five minutes per disc. So let's get started. I should also mention as well, I'm running this disc at six speed. Uh, where I ran the grinding disc at four, this discs and all the rest of the discs I run at six, the highest speed that there is. And I also don't mark up the uh, surface anymore with any marker. Now it's just a visual inspection at the end of each, at the end of each uh, run. So here we go. Okay, so we finished uh, the 220 disc, and things are looking pretty good. Starting to see a little bit of a shine on there. I can tell right off the bat, right off after the first polishing disc, that the rhyolite on the outside is not going to polish as well as the silica in the middle of the Thunder Egg. And that's, I think that's pretty typical with these Thunder Eggs. I polished one before, it was like that. But uh, that's that's cool. It still turned out pretty good. It's, you know, you'll still probably get a mirror shine on this part, but you know, the rhyolite's just gonna be a little bit faded. One little tip I have for when you're done with each disc, I usually let it spin at full speed without water being added when I'm done, just to dry the disc out. You don't want to put it away wet. So I've done that with this disc already. Just let it go for about a minute, full speed, dries it right out, and then you can take off and go to the next one. So the next one for us is 325, let's put it on. Okay, just finished the 325 disc and the polish got a whole lot better on these just from that jump from 220 to 325. So these are looking real good and can't get it to focus there, but Sometimes I can get the focus on the light. There we go. But yeah, these are looking good. And we are off to the 600 grit polishing wheel. Okay, so we're done the 600 grit disc and the shine just keeps getting better. And the, even the Rylite's actually taking a better polish than I anticipated. So these are looking to be pretty good. I think these are going to be quite uh, nice. So we're going to go on to the 1200 grit disc now. And here's the polished surfaces after the 1200 grit disc. And at this point, I don't know if we can get a better shine than this. It's not focusing there, but these, yeah, mirror shine. And even on the rhyolite, it's a mirror shine. So I was too quick to judge that rhyolite. But uh, on this particular Thunder Egg, anyway, must be the makeup of the matrix of the rhyolite. But there are no scratches on this whatsoever. This is a, such a nice shine on this Thunder Egg. And we're going to go through the the uh, the motions here and just do the 3000 grit disc and then we're going to stop there because I can't get a better polish than this on these so yeah we're going to go to the 3000 grit disc now okay so we are done that is the 3000 disc finished and this is the final polish mirror all the way through Really happy with how these turned out. Again, I don't use the polished disc because I find that when I use the diamond paste that comes with the high tech diamond flat lap on certain pieces, it actually dulls the polish. Um, it might be something I'm doing, but I don't really, even, even when I run it on it, you're supposed to run the polish on a really slow speed, like the one speed. But I find even when I do that, it's sometimes it just, 
I don't get at least I don't get a better polish than I get right now on the 3000. So, you know, I like to I like to stop here. Um, I'm super happy with this anyway. I don't know which one's your guys' favorite side, but this one's my favorite side here. And I was going to point out, you know, some land features there. And then you have some water with waves crashing here. Sky in the background. Let me know what you guys see in there. I love Thunder Eggs. They're like a little painting in every one. Each one's unique. I really love this. This is going to go on the shelf. Just to let you guys know, we are an affiliate of High Tech Diamond. We can provide you a 10% discount at their website. And that discount includes everything but machines and gift cards. But you can get 10% off on everything else. They have saw blades. They have these polishing discs, 6 inch and 8 inch. They have various lapidary tools that you can go and shop and use. There's Dremel bits, things like that. So go on over there, check them out. Get yourself a 10% discount. Help yourself out, help the channel out. The code is RHLIFE. So I'll put it up on the screen now. It will also be in the description. Our affiliate link will also be in the description. So you can hit that. Just head on over there through that link. Use the code RHLIFE. And you're all set with your 10% discount. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Polishing these sundra eggs. And as always, have a great week and we'll catch you on the next one.